our merciful and wonderful Heavenly Father. This morning we are praising your holy name. Thank you for creating us, dear Lord, and bringing us into this world. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you, dear Lord, for what we have an opportunity to worship you on your holy Sabbath and to be here from different places and location around the world and here at Takahalui Seventh-day Adventist Church. We are privileged, dear Lord, to pray. We are privileged to sing. We are privileged to worship you and open your word today. Bless us with the power of your Holy Ghost and touch our hearts, mold our characters, and help us to be a new individuals after this experience as we will worship you. We are praying in the name of Jesus. Amen. And 
marvel just on the works of thine hand, O God, and our soul knows it very well. We thank you, Father God, for the Sabbath. We thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father God, for your mercy and for the gift of salvation. We thank you, Father God, for preserving our life and help us to be here in this sanctuary. Lord, we come before you. We have desperately needed you, Lord, in the, those nowadays. Each moment, each week, and every year, Father God, our greatest need is you. You and you alone. Nothing, Father God, can satisfy us like your love. Nothing, Father God, that we desire more than anything in this world but you. Because you did create us for yourself. To fellowship and to have a relationship with you. Father, we ask for your forgiveness. If we often give our time to something that is not priority, to something, Father God, that is not life. We pray that you extend that your hands of mercy and grace to us this morning. And we ask for the blood of Jesus to cleanse us, Father God. If anything in our life, Father God, it does not glorify you. And Lord, search us today and know who we are today. And cleanse us, Father God, and forgive us according to your everlasting mercy. Father, I pray that you be our pastor this morning. As he's going to speak the word of life, your holy word, Father God, I pray that you anoint him. I pray, Father God, for your fresh anointing, touch his heart, touch his lips, and may your Holy Spirit will lead him to all truth. May your Holy Spirit will continue to guide him and help him as he going, Father God, to share the word of God. And as a family, Father God, we were gathered here, open up our heart, Father God, Soften our heart, Lord, so that we can receive your word. Open our ears, Lord, so that we may come to hear, not only to hear, but to receive, and not only to receive, Father God, but do, to be the doer of your word, Father God. And Lord, I pray that your word will become to us like a hammer. Your scripture has said that your word is like a hammer, Lord, to break down the stony part in our life. Your word is like a light that exposes every darkness within our, our attitudes. Your word, Father God, is like the living bread. Help us, Father God, to nourish our mind, soul, and our spirit. Father, I pray for the elderly people, the Shim family, the Rebellion family. I pray for Nana Matri. I pray for Jean. And for those of them that are here, I, I remember Mercedes, Father God, and for those of them who are not here. Father, at the time that there are, the body is weak, it struggles, Father God, in the physical. But I pray, Lord, that you extend that mercy unto them. Keep them close, Father God, to you, and help them, Father God, in their time, in their elderly life, Lord. And I pray, Father God, that you draw closer to them in such a time like this. I pray, Father God, for our church family, for our children, for our young people. Lord, I pray for their career, for their decision that they make each day, for their friendship, for their social life, for their future, Father God, you know them. We place our children, Father God, in your hand. We know that they are safe in your hand, O oh God. May you continue to bless them, Father God, in their social life, in their spiritual life, in their circle of friends, Father God, in their job. Lord, may you watch over them and protect them, Father God, from any evil influence, from the hand of the evil man. We pray that you speak blessing upon our children and cover them with your precious blood. Lord, I pray, Father God, that you have mercy upon us parents. Help us to teach our children in the way they should walk, that we continue to remind them, Father God, of your commandments to protect them, Father God, from the influence of the outsider. Lord, we remember our president, our governor, our mayor. Lord, have mercy upon the authority of our nation. Lord, we pray that you help them, Father God, lead the country in a way that it pleases in you. They are only human beings. 
But we lift them up unto you, Father God, because of the work of the darkness, of the work of the enemy, the kingdom of darkness is coming closer. And I pray, Father God, that your Holy Spirit will be there to help them. And as a church family, we lift them up unto you, because you are the righteous judge. Have mercy, Father God, I pray for our leaders. Lord, help them. That's all we can say, Father God. Please help them, help our nation. And Father, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you can frustrate and bring down the work of the enemy. You cancel and you void it, the plan of the evil one, Father God. But not only that, Father God, help us to trust in you every day. Knowing, Father God, the time is believe that we need to redeem the time because the days are evil. Father, we thank you for listening, and we thank you for answering so many, many prayers that have been other in this sanctuary. We thank you when you say yes, and we thank you when you say no. We also thank you when you say wait. We receive the blessing and receive the answer, and we, we thank you for everything that you have done. We give you back all the glory, honor, praises, and thanksgiving in Jesus' glorious name. And the church will have to say, Amen.
Praise the Lord for the beautiful music. Yes, and praise God what the Lord gave us everything. This morning I would like to say happy Sabbath, dear Kahului Church. It's so nice to see all of you face to face here. And I'm also so happy to see those who are watching us online. May God richly bless all of you who are participating with us. And I would like to greet you with the warm aloha greeting here from Hawaii Kahului Seventh-day Adventist Church. The title of our sermon for today, What God Could Do Through Ordinary You. And we are going to talk about Noah today. And as we will go actually into our scripture reading, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7, I would like to begin with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Merciful Heavenly Father, we are praising you for giving us everything. We are praising you for the gift of life. We are praising you for your holy word, your Bible. We are praising you for the stories from the Bible, like Abraham, Moses, and uh, Jabez, and Samson. And today we would like to talk about Noah. Give us your direction, dear Lord, and bless us with your Holy Spirit. And bless all of those listeners today all over around the world, and especially here in Kahalui Church. It's, we are pleased, dear Lord, to see each other. We would like to do it fervently and honestly in the name of Jesus. Amen. It was by faith, according to the text says over here, it was by faith that made Noah hear God's warning about things in the future. What he could not see, he obeyed God and built a boat in which he and his family were saved. The question I have this morning for all of you, just to see, why did God choose Noah? What do you think, my dear friends? Why did God choose Noah? When God destroyed the whole entire world with the, with the flood, Archaeologist tells us that there are approximately one million people living. So Noah was really one in a million. And God chose Noah. But you see, imagine if you were God. Just imagine, use your imagination for a second. What kind of person you would like to choose to start the human race all over again? Would you choose individual whom you know, or would God choose you? When I've been thinking about this question, if God will choose me, it's getting me a little bit uncomfortable. It's getting me a little bit anxious, and I'm uneasy, and I have some concerns. I say, Lord, why me? I I I'm not good enough. I'm not perfect enough. I'm sinful. Sorry, Lord, but you need to choose someone else. It's easy for us to say this way, but this is how Moses has been approached. This is how Samson has been approached. And this is how the Lord is telling you and me today, when God will choose you, if he's going to choose you for specific reason to save the world, because the Lord keeps close watch, according to Second Chronicles, over the whole world to give strength to those whose hearts are loyal, whose hearts are loyal to him. Why did God choose Noah? It's quite obvious. The Lord saw how evil humans become all over around the earth, according to Genesis chapter 6, verses 5 and 6. All day long their deepest thoughts were nothing but evil. The Lord was sorry what he had made humans on the earth. And he was heartbroken. Just the text before, maybe you notice what the Lord is telling us at Second Chronicles, but those whose hearts are loyal to him. And now the heart of Jesus, the heart of God is broken. Who is broken in the heart of God? Those who are not loyal to him. Those who are not loyal to the Lord, he is, this is why he is here heartbroken. And it says in the verse 7, So he said, I will wipe off the face of the earth, 
these humans, what I created. I will wipe out not only humans, but also domestic animals, crawling animals and birds. I'm sorry what I made them, but the Lord was pleased. With whom? With Noah. Yes, he pleased with Noah. God looked down on earth and he said, this one I'm going to choose. This only one out of the million I'm going to choose. Now open your inserts in the bulletin and write it down. God uses people. God uses people whose hearts are loyal to him. Write it down. God uses those people whose hearts are loyal to him. That's quite pretty obvious. Noah was quite loyal. The fact is, what well, he is the entire population, but God can only find one individual person and his family. God uses only those whose hearts are loyal to him. I remember Pastor Louis Torres. He's an evangelist. He actually had so many missionary schools around the world. And I had the privilege to be in one of them in the Black Hills Missionary School. Pastor Louis Torres actually invited me to his office and talked to me. He said, you know, bring your family out of Uzbekistan to the United States. And this is how we started our journey here in the United States in a way when we are receiving these great stories, how the Lord moved us out of that country to work from here and to sponsor that country from overseas. Great stories ever told. It's saying in here about a gaining decision. Pastor Louis Torres is writing for us about the loyalty and about the loyalty of the purchased slave. He's writing the following story. A black slave was an auction block. He was young. And his physics were made quite obvious, but he was quite strong. Higher and higher went the price. The slave was yelling violently, but they were wasting their money. I'm not going to work for any man, he shouted. But the bidding continued. Higher and higher and higher. Finally, the market struck, sold to the highest bidder. Angrily, the slave kept cursing and raving. You wasted your money. You wasted your money, mister. I'm working for no man. The owner did not seem to pay attention to his threats for miles until the cart reached the owner's property. He went over, took the key to the chain, unlocked the lock, and actually removed the shackles. Mister, didn't you hear? I'm not working for no man, I told you, I told you, you wasted your money, yelled the slave. The owner simply said, I bought you to set you free. And upon these words, the owner turned around and began to walk away. Wait, wait a minute. The slave cried out. What did you say? You're trying to say what I'm free now? I told you so. You're free to go. And he was going toward his house. The slave had no idea what to do. Over the time. The slave ran back to the mister. Oh, mister. Oh, mister. Forgive me. I will serve you forever. Yes, this is the story in this special book by Pastor Louis Torres. He shared many stories about his personal experience and personal life. How his ancestors moved from overseas to the United States. How he was playing in the rock group and he was absolutely possessed by the different spirit. How the Lord changed his life and brought him into this world, saving so many people. By sharing this story, he shared about Jesus, who came 2,000 years ago into this world and bought you and me to make us free. He paid the price on the old rugged cross. Yes, we're saying it's an old rugged cross. It's exactly the old rugged cross where you paid, the, the Jesus Christ paid your price and mine. And it's paid not with the silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. 
Why have we been thinking about Noah? Why did God choose Noah? I wanted to wonder and question you. Noah had no knowledge about Jesus. Noah had no knowledge about New Testament. He never read Apostle Peter about be bought by the price, by the precious blood of Christ. But Noah was always, always faithful to God. And he was loyal to the Lord Jesus Christ. God uses people who have the courage to be different. This is the second point which I would like for you to write it down. The second statement in your characteristic reference, if you would like to be in heaven, God uses people who have the courage to be different. You see, Noah had God's approval. And was Noah, according to the text here, he was man of integrity. Among the people of his time, he walked with God. Noah was a man of deep honor. He had the courage to be different. He was not afraid to stand out. He was not afraid to stand alone. He was not afraid of the other people's opinion. Regardless of whatever people are saying, he had his strong personal opinion about his beliefs. You see, we need, to, we need to remember. We need to remember. At this point in the world's history, the society was actually, the society was morally corrupt. According to this situation here in verses 11 and 12 of chapter 6, we see what violence, immorality were all over the planet of the earth. It was the lowest point in the history of this earth. This is why God, when he looked at the earth and all the people, he said, no, 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 I cannot, I cannot, uh, I, I cannot uh, deal with these people anymore in such a way. I need to send a flood and purify the planet Earth. At that moment, in spite of all the facts, whatever people lived around Noah, Noah lived the righteous and blameless life the righteous and blameless life. Besides, we need to admit that fact, but Noah, he had no idea about righteousness by faith, terminology. He never used those words on those days, but he was loyal to the Lord, and he was faithful to the Lord, and he was actually, had the courage to be different. When I'm thinking, what, uh, we live in a time then Jesus, according to Jesus, he said, what we are living at the last days. At the last days is going to be the same time like the time of Noah. What we are going through right now, it's like in the time of Noah. And God stepped in and allowed for this virus to be all over around the world for us to reconcile, for us to reconsider, for us to stand alone against the whole crowd and check on our own faithful beliefs and faithful beliefs and our own personal lifestyle. Regardless of what's happening in the world, regardless of the permissi permissiveness right now, should we go to the church or should we sit in our laziness at home and watch from our sofas? Should we just do it in our convenience according to our time? Or should we be faithful on time and meet the Lord? It's up to you. But the Lord knows your heart and knows your desire to be faithful to him. And according to the Jesus' words, we live in the time of Noah. And I'm trying to place myself in the time of Noah and try to imagine this situation. Noah has kids, three of them, yes? And try to imagine they're going to public school. Yeah, if you will send kids to our Christian Seventh-day Adventist school over here, we have Hawaiian Mission Academy Maui now. Please send your kids over here and you will be blessed. There will be no pressure and no uh, bad influence. If you, if you say, no, my kids are very little ones, no problem. We have a preschool for you also. Do we have a space? In pre no, we don't have a I'm so sorry, next year. But look forward to. Because, you see, we need to admit the fact that Noah's kids, if we will admit what they went to the public school, and they're saying, oh, yes, what did your dad do? Oh, yes, he's building that ark. 
Oh, he's an ark builder. And the kids coming home, Dad, that ark over there on the lawn, could you just, could you find a normal job? Why people all in town are talking about us? Everybody is talking only about your ark. You build an ark when there is no rain over here. And you're talking about ark and a flood and what is going on to be. You see, in the public school, I'm sure what kids receive the pressure. And now Noah, Noah is standing alone. He is not afraid to stay against the crowd. And Noah was loyal to the Lord. And this is the actual third characteristic of Noah. What God is uses people who follow him completely. I would like for you to write it down in your insert. Because this is, we already see the three characteristics of the loyal and the faithful people who follow God completely. And the people of God, God people God uses those who actually follow direction without making excuses. I need to admit that fact. What Noah had no book of Genesis and Noah had no book of Revelation. He was not familiar with Second Chronicles or any other books throughout the whole entire Bible. Noah was in the beginning of journey and he really went by faith. And he was looking forward to the providence and promises of the Lord without that knowledge which we have. It's a huge luggage from Genesis to Revelation. And you see, by having this faith, Noah moved forward. Noah did everything what God commanded, what God commanded to him. Noah didn't do in a way like, Lord, I would like to do this part, but I think there will it'll be this one part which I will build, it will be better. No, no, according to the Bible, did exactly what the Lord asked him to do. As we know, in Genesis 2, it says, in that way, the earth was watered only by the mist from the ground. And the kids, uh, kids were playing around, enjoying life, but neither one of them ever, ever seen rain. It's never rained before on a planet Earth. And the actual... Um, actual fact when the Noah saw the rainbow first time in his life Noah and his family it just blew him away and said wow what is this rainbow what does it mean rainbow and they were admiring this fact because it was first time when the rain started to fall down on earth Noah was building his ark right over there in a deserted place people were talking in town but Noah was doing his job and standing against the crown. Regarding what there is no rain, Noah was still faithful. And as you know, Noah and his family, they went into the ark. And when did it start to rain? The same night? The next day? No. For another seven days. Seven days more they were in the ark. Already feeding the animals. Already in the ark. People are mocking and crying outside and playing games and knocking at the ark and saying, hey, are you still there? This is what was happening for the seven days until the first drop fell down on earth. You see, it's amazing what the Lord did. And it's always amazing to me when I started to research this subject actually out of the Bible and check online what's happening. I found so many scientists who are proving the fact what Noah's flood was the correct historical picture. It's really happened. It's a real fact. You cannot change it. You cannot move it. An amazing fact, how Noah with his three boys could have collected all the animals until the Lord gave the command and said to all the animals and creatures, go into the Noah's ark. And Noah only just needed to select the clean and unclean. This is what the Bible says. The greatest event in history happened. And people all over around the world, they're watching what Noah was doing, looking at the animals they're going into the ark. But they were so unclear in their mind, not even noticing the amazing facts what's really happening in front of their eyes. And I'm wondering about our days. People are thinking, what's happening right now around the world? It's just one of the new events, excuse me, it's not just a new event. We're getting closer and closer to the final days of this earth. And you will see it. It's going to be so short. 
in the book of Patriarchs and Prophets, Sister White is writing in page 50 in chapter 8, the waters rose 50 cubits above the highest mountains. It often seems to the family within the ark, what they must do what? Perish. As for five long months, their boat was tossed about. Apparently, at the mercy of the wind and the wave, it was a trying ordeal. But Noah's faith did not waver. But he had the assurance that the divine hand was upon the hell. It's amazing, you see, what the Lord can do for you and me. One of the special tests which the Lord would like to give it to you and me, it's his instructions. Instructions which sometimes don't make any sense. Noah was building an ark during the dry time, sitting for seven days during the time when there was no rain at all. People were laughing outside until that moment when Noah proved what he is loyal to the Lord, what Noah had the courage to be different, and Noah was standing quite strong in his relationship with God, to whom he promised that he is going to build the ark to save eight people and the first generation of people during those days. And that's why God could use him. And I'm wondering if God would like to use you to save the world. Are you ready? Are you going to be willing to? You see, God uses people who never give up. These people never give up. Write it down in your outline. God uses amazing people. God used Moses and Abraham. And God is writing for us what is going to happen very shortly on the planet Earth. God uses people who never give up. And this is what it says in the text here. What God looked at Abraham, and Abraham waited for how many years until he received Isaac? He reached 100. I'm thinking about Moses. Moses, he turned 80 when the Lord called him to do the ministry and to go to Egypt. But I'm thinking about Noah. Noah actually waited for a longer time. Noah was an example of patience, persistence, and determination. He was a hard worker. And Noah actually building an ark. It says in book of Genesis chapter 6, verse 3, My spirit shall not abide in mortals forever, for they are flesh. Their days shall be 120 years. God is saying there is a limit to his patience. My dear listeners, there is a limit to the time on the planet Earth. There is a limit to God's patience because this Earth is going to be purified by fire, according to the Bible. Not by flood anymore, but by fire. God is saying what is the limit until the Lord destroy the Earth, purify the Earth, recreate the Earth, but all the faithful believers will be taken out of this earth, not just by secret rapture right now, but at the last days before Jesus comes. When Jesus comes, it will be a special resurrection. It will be a special moment. And we will see Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven with the holy angels. Thousands of thousands of angels are going to surround Jesus and be around Jesus at that time. Just try to imagine Mrs. Noah. Mrs. Noah comes home from work and asking, Noah, how was your working day today? Oh, the same, the same work all day yesterday and today and tomorrow. For how long? For 120 years. God was waiting for Noah to finish the ark for 120 years. This is why he gave it 120 years time for the human beings still to be on the planet Earth. One of the reasons why God chose Noah, because according to the time, Noah tried his best, but slowly and maturely he built it, fervently and specially, in a way like we have right now, the history tells us what he built, the ark in a special way, which survived all the pressures of the ocean at that time. Noah never gave up. He's an example of persistence, day in and day out, building and nailing, but I've been thinking about people who try to tempt Noah. I've been thinking about people who try to criticize Noah. 
I've been thinking about people who try to criticize you and me. And when I'm opening the New Testament, I see what 2,000 years ago, God came from heaven to earth. His name is Jesus. He came to earth to die for you, to die for me. People, oh, they criticize him. People, they, they spit on him. People, they ridiculed him. People, they beat him. And people eventually killed him on the old rugged cross. God used Noah because he was a man of commitment. But Jesus said about Noah's time, and he said that the last days is going to be the same. People will just enjoy life. People will be happy. People will marry. People will be uh, uh, joyful without knowing what kind of joy they are really experiencing, trying to say happy, happy, happy in reality. It's just only for the, on the base of the material stuff. But everything is going to be burned and burned forever. But I believe what God is actually going to come to this planet Earth. And Noah, while he was building an ark with his own family, against the whole crowd, believed what someday the judgment of God is going to come on the planet Earth. It's interesting to notice what Muslims believe in the judgment of God, Jewish believe in the judgment of God, and the Christians believe in the judgment of God. Major religions around the world all believe in the judgment of God. At the same time, people don't care too much about what is really going to happen. You know, at that day, it's going to be black and white. You know, at that day, it's going to be no time to make a decision and purify your character. Because Noah, during his 120 years, already prepared his character for the day of the rain. That later rain is going to come on you and me when we are purifying our character in our daily walk with Jesus. When you are actually walking with the Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus will say to you, are you ready to be like Noah? Do you find yourself saying, I wonder what other people are going to think about me if I will be like Noah, if I will make this step forward, if I will actually do some bold actions in my life? And I will wonder, do the people know what you come into the church? Do the people know what you really read in the Bible and pray? Do the people around you know what you are a real Christian and you are faithful to the God of heaven? And you know, if you will do this, people will certainly notice. They will know what you are a different individual. They will tell you that into your eyes, what you are quite different compared to the rest of the people. Because you know someone who made you in his image. You know, I need to tell you a little bit more here. There is an epilogue in Noah's life. In Genesis chapter 9, it says, the Bible is saying what the shift happened after the actual flood. The Bible says what this man who lived blameless life, he built the ark. And after the flood, the land dried out. And Noah and his family built a vineyard. And Noah got drunk and made a fool of himself. This is what the Bible says. And Noah, who lived a perfect life, among those who were worshiping idols, adulterers, and all those evildoers, Noah was the righteous man. And now, after the flood, he made shame of himself. On the other hand, when I'm reading this story, it's given me some support, and I will call this a second chance. The Lord is always a second chance giver. He is giving the Noah a second chance again. He's saying, whatever Noah you did in the past, I remember. But if this is what you're doing right now with this vineyard and making full of himself, it's a shame. It's a terrible thing. And I'm sure what Noah asked for forgiveness. He confessed his sins. And Noah recuperated again under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. This kind of God I worship who is forgiving sins, who is restoring you once again into his image. And this is what I would like to say, I don't know. I don't know what mistakes you made in your life. I don't know how many mistakes you made in your life. I don't know if you've been falling flat face on the floor 
because of all of your background and your sins. But please read the story of Noah. Read the story of Samson. Read the story of prodigal son. Read the stories after stories on the pages of the Bible, which will give you the second chance to see what God is holding everything under control in this world. And he would like to save you and bring you back into his kingdom. Amen. You know, maybe it could be moral problems. Maybe you're going through the divorce. Maybe, maybe you have some smoking problems. Maybe you have some drinking problems. Maybe you are attached to the pornography. Who knows? Only God knows what, how you're spending your time. Maybe you have problems with jealousy. Maybe you are thinking about only material things around you. But everything is going to be burned by fire. We need to remember this. Because the time is coming to the close. And we need to remember what God is only using, not only perfect people, but God is using ordinary people like you and me. God used Noah in a special way to give us an example. But today we can easily pray and say, Lord Jesus, thank you for the story of Noah. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are praising you for the example of Noah. Thank you. What it's very true today what we are living in a time of Noah. But help us to be like Noah, to be loyal to you, even in a time of pressure and temptations from the people of Satan. Oh, dear Lord, help us to be different and stay quite strong to follow you completely and be faithful to you in the times like this in which we are living right now. Oh, dear Lord, and help us never give up until we will see you in the clouds of heaven with your holy angels. What a day is going to be when you will come to take us home. As you said, dear Lord, the last days are going to be like the days of Noah. Help us to be faithful in the times of Noah in our days. Forgive our sins and renew our spirit. And as we are going through shifting and, 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 and pressuring and, and temptations of Satan, Help us to remain with the Bibles in our hands and the prayer in our hearts faithful against the whole entire temptations and crowd around us. Thank you, dear Lord, for using ordinary people like me, like all of these people here, and for those who are listening right now. May your name will be praised for all these heroes whom you placed in Hebrew chapter 11, verse 7. In the name of Jesus, amen. Number six.